video. Today we've got the SL20 from Adidas and we're going to be doing a review after the first run and talking about some of the features including the upper, the outsole, the midsole and then we're also going to talk about price. So the first run that I did in these shoes was an 8K threshold and I'll tell you now, it felt really great. I really enjoyed how the shoe felt. Before we go into any of my opinions though, I'm gonna quickly take you through the spec. So for the weight of the shoe, I think they come in at about 230 grams for a UK 8, which is an America 9. Uh, my shoes are a UK 9.5 and they weighed about 235 so I think it's fair to say they're a pretty light shoe that's actually lighter than some of the much pricier shoes. It's got a heel to toe drop of 10 millimeters with a heel of 24 and a forefoot of 14 millimeters. This shoe is designed for road running but I'm sure it could cope with some light trail or off-road use. So that's the specs, let's get into the upper. So the upper on this shoe is a mesh. It's breathable and supportive and it's really, really lightweight. It really brings down the overall weight of the shoe without reducing the feel when you're running. It is really comfortable to wear. However, the cushioning in some of the areas in the upper of the shoe is a bit minimal. There's no cushioning around the tongue of the shoe. And when I say no, there is literally nothing. Like, it's just a little bit of fabric there. There is some more cushioning around the heel where your foot contacts with the back of the shoe. I can't say anything because I've only taken these shoes on a couple of runs, but apparently this is one of the first areas to start to show signs of wear. With the laces, they fit really well around your foot. They're quite wide, so they can really wrap nicely down the sides of your foot. Um, I have found them a bit hard to adjust, especially towards the bottom down here. But overall, I mean, they tie up nicely, they stay in place. I think the lacing system is really quite good on these. They're actually a really stylish shoe. The design's really nice. I mean, I think there's over 14 colours of this shoe that you can buy on the Adidas website. Over here on the three stripes, it's got some Japanese-inspired artwork that you'll be able to see. That's quite nice. Overall, I do think they look quite nice. And I mean, there's so many to choose from. I'm sure you'll find a colour that will suit you. The mesh upper is also really thin and it also means it's really breathable. I mean, you could wear these in the hottest of days and I don't think you'd get too much sweat. In my run, I mean, it was in the middle of December, so it's winter. So I don't think my feet would have been sweating anyway, but they just felt like they were really breathable. If anything, I felt like my feet were getting too cold. I mean, they'd be perfect for running all through the summer. So that's it for the upper of the shoe. Now we're going to move on to the midsole. When I took these shoes out on a run, I mean, I felt like they were really pushing me forward nicely. I could feel the forward force of the Adidas Light Strike midsole. My feet felt supported around this area, but it's also flexible, so they felt free to move. So the foam in the midsole of these shoes is the Adidas Light Strike. Now, Adidas described the foam to be light enough for explosive speed, but responsive enough for total comfort. And actually, I would say that I agree. The Light Strike foam is quite a new technology for Adidas, and it's much lighter and more responsive than the old Boost. It also means that Adidas have also been able to add more foam to the midsole of the shoe without adding too much weight. I am quite light, so I can only imagine for a heavier runner, the slight lack of cushion may be a small problem. For me, I feel like the faster you go with this shoe, the faster they'll take you. For the shorter distances, these shoes are really, really good. I think that's where they shine. I would take them up to 10k and higher, but if you're looking to run marathons or longer, probably they're not the best shoe. Although they cope fine, I think there are other shoes that on the market that will probably be better suited to your style of running. Yeah, we'll move on to the outsole. The outsole of the shoe is continental, and although this only stretches halfway along the shoe, I think it should provide great durability. The outsole of the shoe is protective across all kinds of surfaces like grass, concrete, gravel, and all the surfaces I've tried it on, coming back from my runs, my feet have felt fresh and I haven't felt any kind of pain. 
and I think this is partly down to the strong stable outsole. I also had no problems with the grip, uh, it was fairly wet on the day that I went out on my run but I think it will be fine in any kind of wet, slippery conditions, there was no problems there either. There's also a torsion plate in the outsole which provides a bit of stiffness to the midsole, outsole area and it also gives a bit of spring to your step when you're running. Overall, I can't really comment on the durability of the outsole because I haven't worn them for long at all. But with the Continental rubber, I can only imagine that there wouldn't really be any durability problems. It is quite a thin layer, but it's good quality rubber. So I think they'll last quite a while. So we've talked about all the physical qualities of the shoe. Now we're gonna talk about value. And honestly, with these shoes, the value is unbeatable. So the shoe was originally about 100 pounds everywhere on the market. But since the release of the SL20.2, it's dropped to between 60, 70 pounds in most places, even on the Adidas website. The SL20.2 does bring some benefits and it's said to cope better on the longer, slower runs. But the SL20.2 is nearly double the price, so you really have to question, is it worth it when you can get this so cheap and it's such a great shoe? Overall, it performs great for both training and racing, and I would recommend it to anyone who's looking for a speedier shoe. And to be honest, if you're on a budget, it's perfect, and I wouldn't look any further. So there, we've covered everything about the SL20 shoe in this fairly short video. If you did enjoy it, then leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll do another review of the SL20 after 100 miles if you guys enjoyed this one so you can look at the durability and how it performed after it's run a longer distance. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.